today we'll be going through the... So last week I got it wrong. I said fourth, and I think it was the fifth. Uh, so today I think is the sixth installment of the Acts series that we've been going through. Um, and yeah, just really glad that we have an opportunity that we can walk through uh, the book of Acts together for uh, the past few weeks and the next several weeks to come. Today we'll be going through uh, the sixth installment and our main passage will be from Acts 4 verse 23 to 33. And uh, just over the past few weeks we've been looking at different aspects of how uh, the early church was coming into formation. Uh, and we looked at different themes that did arise from that. And today's theme will actually be on prayer. Uh, I've titled today's message, Prayer That Brings Power. Now, uh, when it comes to the topic of prayer, I know prayer is a broad topic. And, and for some, it can actually be quite daunting. Um, I know for myself, this is an area where I am indeed growing. And uh, sometimes I feel more like a student uh, and a, than a teacher. So I think today we'll just all of us sit as students and see uh, what we can learn from uh, the prayer meeting, one of the prayer meetings in, uh, that the early church had much earlier on uh, as they were being developed. So I think before we talk about prayer, I'm just going to say a short prayer. Let us pray. Father God, we give you uh, praise, glory, and honor. We are really thankful and grateful that we can come together like this. And Father, I just pray that even as I go through today's message, uh, may you speak to all of us, because this is indeed an area where you have charged us to do. You've charged us to pray continuously. So I pray our hearts may be open to learn from you today. In Jesus' name, amen. So today's reading, uh, and before I just want to recap a bit, uh, this follows Peter and John after they did the healing in the temple. Now, last week, Sheshi spoke on healing, uh, and it was in reference to, to what Peter and John did. Now, this was when the church was moving and, and numbers were being added to the church daily. They were currently uh, over 5,000 strong, just 5,000 men alone. So the church was really... Um, gaining momentum. Now, this momentum also brought with it uh, attention from the leaders, especially the religious leaders of that time. And now they were feeling threatened by the invasion of this new teaching. This new teaching uh, that the apostles were praying, I mean, sorry, were teaching about Jesus Christ. Uh, now they're coming out of just crucifying Jesus, but now they're seeing a lot of activity happen and people coming to faith in Jesus Christ. So this results in some of them uh, getting together and, and interrogating them. Uh, they spent a night in jail and were brought forth to the, the temple leaders and had to uh, answer the questions that they had for them. So this was a, uh, the sort of introduction to the different opposition and persecution that uh, the church would feel in these, in these early days. So the passage picks up the narrative just after Peter and John are released from uh, the courts after they had to talk to the Sanhedrin. Now, this was also after I spent a night in jail. Now, our reading for today is from Acts 4.23 up until 33. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The, king of the, earth, the kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Her Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in this city to conspire against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand and heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. 
After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. All the believers were in one heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's grace was so powerful at work in them all. Amen. So for today's message, I just want to cover three main points that, that come out from the scripture, and it's not an exhaustive list, but these are themes which arise, which we can draw some lessons from and hopefully enrich our own prayer lives. So the first point will be prayer in healthy fellowship brings power. The second point will be prayer rooted in scripture brings power. And the third, prayer aligned to God's agenda brings power. So for the first point, prayer in healthy fellowship brings strength and power. Verse 23 says, on their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer. Now, I think we need to understand that Peter and John just came from an encounter which uh, was probably both powerful but also draining at the same time. Imagine you're, you're healing people, you, you've healed someone and people are coming to faith and you spend the night in jail. Now, this could be traumatic, uh, especially if you've never spent time in jail before. And Peter and John, when they came out, uh, they went to the fellowship of believers. That was their first stop. Now, uh, an example from my life is, is I've been told that when tragedy strikes um, or where something bad happens, I, I'm a type of person that I'm in denial, but <laughs> I'm the type of person that would want to tell everyone or Anyone who would lend an ear to hear is, is, is someone who I would retell this tale to. Now, we usually seek out something uh, that will give us relief when we do go through challenging times. Now, here we see that Peter and John, uh, they spent time in prison, and their first response was uh, to go to a place where they would find relief, and for them, that was the, that was the fellowship of believers. For other people, that may not have been the case. They may have gone to seek solace either in isolation, alone, or with a group of friends, or um, perhaps maybe go walk on the beach or in the desert for them. Um, but that's not what Peter and John did. Thank God that they had a healthy fellowship of believers that they could go back to um, just even after this uh, unique and, I would say, draining experience. You see, here we, we see the community of believers uh, providing that relief for Peter and John. A few weeks ago, Sode spoke very well on how fellowship is important. And here we're seeing the fruits of that, where Peter and John moved in a mighty way, but also received opposition, and their response was to move into a healthy fellowship with their believers. They had a support system. They had familiar faces which they could go to. They had a body of believers who are even praying for them probably um, as they faced uh, the challenges that they were facing as a result of the miracles that were taking place in the temple. Now, the reason why I say it, it's a healthy fellowship of believers is because their first response was to pray. It said in verse 24, when they heard this, now Peter and John probably explained in great detail what had happened to them and what they said. When they heard this, the believers together got together, um, I mean, sorry, raised their voices together and prayed to God. Now, that is a healthy response because many things could have happened at that point. They could have probably warned Peter and John not to keep doing what they're doing unless they wanted to put themselves in more risk. Uh, they could have just been sort of careless and sort of said, oh, thank you for telling us your tale. Um, carry on believing, God be with you. But that's not what the believers did. They got together and, and started praying to God. You see, even at this point in time, if the group decided that they were going to revolt, because they were at least 5,000 strong, 
5,000 men. They had an army. They could have gone and overthrown the temple. Uh, and I think it depends on the type of people that you associate with or go and meet after uh, challenges happen in your life. Uh, and here we thank God that Peter and John had a healthy fellowship where their response was not to rebel. Their response was not to increase uh, fear in their, in, in, in their, in, in their hearts by a sort of um, hypothesizing what may happen next. Their response was to look, turn their eyes and pray to God. And this was corporate prayer because they were all gathered together and it was a great number of them who both, all in unison decided that what we're going to do in response to what Peter and John have said is to indeed pray. And here I think it highlights that indeed there is power and strength that comes from uh, praying in healthy fellowship. It was strength returning to Peter and John as they are in a community of people who they know love them, and also strength and faith being built for the rest of the body as they see uh, the great works that Peter and John are declaring and the boldness in which they spoke when they, sp they stood in front of the religious leaders. The importance of corporate prayer is that, and even in a church setting like ours, corporate prayer is something which I believe is very important because it provides strength to the weary, to those who are in pain, to those who are suffering, to those who are going through different challenges. For example, Sheshi, when you were away for many months, I remember the corporate prayers, even though we couldn't meet face to face, we leveraged technology and were able to have Zoom calls where I'd say the attendance was overwhelming um, and encouraging for us to pray together like that. I know it brought strength and power to you guys as we prayed for you, but I think it also brought strength and power to our faith as we've seen the fruits of what God has done. As we see that you guys have returned here today, that is a, a fruit or rather a, uh, a strength and an energy boost to our faith. And I would even encourage that we keep corporate prayer in, a, in, a, in high regard in our hearts because corporate prayer is where we draw from one another. Corporate prayer is where we, we are able to come and bring our burdens and see um, the response in prayer and, and see God move in a mighty way. And that's what we're seeing happened here uh, with Peter and John, that they went out, they spoke to, and retold the tale to the, to the believers, and the believers responded in prayer. Now that will bring me to, to my next point, because there are a couple of things that we see. It wasn't just any kind of prayer, but there were specific uh, themes that we can, I think, draw from uh, as we see what it is that they actually, actually prayed about. And my second point, it's, we'll call it prayer rooted in Scripture brings power. Uh, from verse 24, it says, Sovereign Lord, they said, you made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. You see, this was a part of scripture which was taken from Psalms 2. Uh, they've even said that it's uh, a Psalm of David. You spoke uh, through our father David. So they drew on the foundation of scripture. There's a solid foundation of truth that we have available to us in the word of God. And that's what these believers reached, um, reached for in this time of prayer. They did not start with their own opinions and emotions, but re rather they took to the Bible as being uh, a source which they can draw from. I think here in their midst were people who knew scripture and could appropriately draw on its wisdom and apply it to the situation. Another benefit that we see coming from this is the fact that they were probably also young believers in the congregation who may not have knew, known scripture to the degree as some of the others, but the beauty of being in a corporate prayer setting is the fact that those who are indeed stronger can pray scripture accurately and in a mighty way and see God uh, and see the application of scripture and learn from that and, and better their own prayer lives from that. Here they quote a psalm from David highlighting 
how leaders and people were raging against God and his people. Now, this was a prophetic psalm because it was relevant both in David's time and, and relevant for them in that very moment. They were also facing opposition. They were facing opposition because of Christ. Now, power, I believe, faith gets re-energized and in the presence of, sorry, faith gets re-energized in the presence of God's word. They had reference to scripture where people went through similar things in the past, but they also, you know, uh, their faith was grown or rather fortified by the word of God. That, okay, this has been spoken in scripture. This was spoken by our father David. Now we are seeing and living through this. Now how can we apply our faith in this, in this setting, in this prayer that we are praying? And I think that's a benefit that comes from having prayer rooted in the word of God. If we are to see God power, if we were to see God's power empower us today, we do and we will need a faith that is energized and fortified by the true word of God, by the whole counsel of, word, of the word of God being the foundation for all our prayers. Uh, I liked when Christine was singing that song um, that I'll build my life on, 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 on the foundation of the Word of God because that even our prayers need to be rooted in the Word of God because that is the source of truth and that's what brings stability uh, and calibration to the prayers that we do pray when we meet together. You see, when faced with opposition that wants to annihilate God's mandates and plans, uh, we will need a faith that is rooted in the Word of God to be able to, to, to uh, result in the right response when we do pray. Here we see that the, the power that came as a result of them drawing on Scripture, uh, drawing on the truths which are in Scripture, um, sort of brought a balance and a calibration to their prayers where uh, they didn't go off praying uh, maybe stuff which was outside of the will of God, but they kept their prayer and their focus on what it is God was doing in their time, in that time and in that season. Now, we also have to realize that Scripture can indeed be misappropriated in prayer. Scripture can be misquoted. Scripture can be used uh, to bend and suit man's will in prayer. But there is power present when believers gather and rightly draw from the Scriptures. Rightly applying scripture in prayer brings power because rightly applying scripture in prayer enforces the faith that we do have to carry out the work that God wants us to do in this time and in this season. And and when people are praying, uh, sorry, when these believers were praying like this, we actually do see the results later on where God shows up in a mighty way. Now, for the my final point, which I want to highlight, is the fact that prayer aligned to God's agenda brings power. If we see from verse 29, it says, Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hands to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Here I think I've added emphasis on the number of yours that you see. Here the emphasis on the word your is the believers were praying to God, but they were highlighting that they are his servants, it is his word, it is his hand, it is his son. They were, no, they were fully aware that what they were doing was not their work. What they were doing, what they were carrying out the purposes and plans of God in this time. Their pr- prayer was not rooted in self. It was rooted in what God was doing in that time and that season. There they say, God, enable your servants to speak your word. Stretch out your hand uh, in the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Here, the word of, I mean, sorry, the work of God and God establishing his kingdom was the main focus of the prayer. They went through a time in jail. Jesus did promise that opposition would come, but I think here they were actually getting acquainted with that opposition. They were actually seeing it come to pass. 
and their response was not to retreat, it was not to be terrified, but their response was to say, okay, God, consider the threats of these people. So they were aware that these threats were there and these threats were, um, had the ability to shake their faith. But all they, all they uh, allotted to that in their prayer was that, okay, God, just consider the threats that are happening. Now empower us to carry on doing your work. It wasn't, they didn't spend time meditating um, and praying over the threats, uh, the type of threats, uh, maybe curbing the threats away. No, they said, God, you see everything. You are sovereign over all. You were sovereign when Christ was crucified. You are sovereign now. Consider the threats of the people, but now give us the power to do your work. And I think that's part of uh, the beauty when you come together. Um, the focus goes away from self. The focus goes away from my issues and my problems and my um, struggles. If Peter and John probably went to their respective households, it would be more difficult to pray such a prayer like this because they are the ones who were actually seeing this opposition full front. They saw it um, and, and what, what came as a result when they got into corporate prayer with the body is that people directed or they all directed their gaze upwards and said, okay, God, we need to carry on doing your work. Grant us your power to carry this out in this time and in this season. In verse 33, we, we actually do see the results where it does say that with great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all. The power and, and, and the result of their prayer was God backing up his work. But he was backing up his work. He wasn't um, preserving their comforts. He was moving in a mighty way because they cried out to God and said, okay, God, we need your boldness. We need your strength because we are your servants to carry out your work. And I think that is a, a challenge to us all in, in, in how it is that we do pray. What is the composition of our prayer lives? Um, I know, like I said earlier on, I am still a student in prayer and, and this preparing just for this message challenged me a lot because um, I know that sometimes in my prayer time I do pray to God for my own agenda. I, I wouldn't pray dangerous prayers like, okay, God, um, whatever may come, I'm still committed to the work. I'd rather pray a prayer that says, Lord, protect me from all harm because that's easier to pray. That's easier to to, to ask for because that, that aligns a lot more with our desire, our desires as humans. But here we see that when you get into a healthy fellowship and prayer does rise up, um, it's almost as if the Holy Spirit quickens the hearts of men and says, okay, now, guys, there's work to be done. Let us carry that out. Now, that should be the model not only in corporate prayer, but also in our prayer life, I mean, in our personal prayer times as well. We can draw a lot from, from seeing this prayer meeting because um, we see how God brought power from the prayers that they were praying. And they were aligned to God's agenda in, in a sense where they were not preserving their comforts, but God delivered his power in a mighty way because they were asking for grace and boldness to carry out the work of God in, this, in, in that time that they were living in. You see, I think there are a few applications that we can have um, as believers from what it is we're seeing here uh, in the scriptures. First and foremost is that we do need to be part of a corporate sort of fellowship of believers. We spoke on fellowship a week ago, but we do need fellowship in increasing measure. Um, even meeting physically like this a few months ago is not possible. This is a privilege that we can gather here together like this today. Recently, uh, a friend of mine, a family friend, actually, uh, are going through a tough time where one of their parents passed away. Now, it was, it is tough. It's a tough situation because um, where they're living, there is, a, there is lockdown. And when I was having a conversation with her, she's actually, we are, she's a year older than me, and we've known each other for a very long time, she was saying that we do not need money, we don't want 
yes, it's fine that people are supporting with money, but what we need are people's, to see people's faces, to be in fellowship, to see people who we love, to see people who we enjoy their presence. Um, and she was highlighting the, something that we sometimes take for granted. There is a great importance and a weight in fellowship and, and initiatives like the life groups that we do have are very important because storms will come. Peter and, and John did face a storm and the storm, I mean, their first response was to go back to the fellowship of believers because that's where we draw and find strength. And an and application will be that we should all um, strive to be part of corporate prayer, strive to be a part of life groups because when the storms do come, we will need that strength that God provides um, from other people as we draw from um, other believers that we, we have come accustomed to in our community. And secondly, I think prayer rooted in scripture is, is something which is important because even though we can congregate, I believe if we do not in our personal lives have the discipline of seeking and knowing God's truth, then it can actually morph into just us meeting as a club where we just come and have conversations just for, um, just for entertainment or whatever it may be. But scripture is, is, is a focal point that we see uh, in this, uh, in this uh, scripture that we read today that I believe it should also be a focal point in our lives. That as we do strive to meet with one another, we should be reading the Bible both on the court and off the court both when we congregate um, and also when we, we are uh, in our own personal times. Because the power that comes with prayer, we'll be able to then pray scripture, sorry, yeah, pray scripture in a way that is accurate, pray scripture in a way that is aligned to the will of God and see that inform the way in which we interact with God and interact with others as we carry out our tasks. And thirdly, it's to pray according to God's agenda. This is a difficult one for me as well, that we have to ask God to search our hearts and for God to, sh to be honest with us and say, okay, this area of your heart is actually self-serving. Self for us to pray and say, okay, God, I am facing challenges, but help me do what it is you've called me to do, whatever that may be. We are all called to different spheres of influence and, and we operate in different circles. But we should not retract when we receive opposition. And I think that's an example we see clearly in today's scripture. We should not retract when opposition comes. Instead, we should press into God and pray for his agenda to happen. The risk with that is the fact that God, okay, will provide his power, but we do not prescribe what happens and how that happens. Here they did not pray, God, let us have the boldness to speak, but may we not end up in jail again. They just asked for the boldness to carry out God's work and did not prescribe how God carries that out. And I think that's the type of, and that's how I'm encouraged to pray uh, with, the, with the boldness to say, okay, God, it's your agenda, not mine. And in closing, I'd just like to highlight and to quote the verses, actually, of the scripture that they quoted when they were praying. They quoted the first few verses of Psalms 2, uh, and I'll just read from, from verse 4 to 6. Verse 4 to 6 says, The one enthroned in heaven laughs. The Lord scoffs at them. He rebukes them in his anger and terrifies them in his wrath, saying, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. Verse 6 again says, I have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. That is referring to the king in which we serve, Jesus Christ. May we never forget who we are praying to. The source of all power and strength lie with Jesus Christ, who is currently enthroned above it all. You see, the church had a revelation of who Christ was in that time. They, some of them actually walked with Christ and saw him and walked and saw the miracles that did happen. So yes, they did pray bold prayers, but they also had a revelation of who they were praying to. And I, our prayer is that as we pray and as we seek to pray and, 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 and see our prayer life uh, morph and evolve and grow, may we also have deeper revelation of who it is we're praying to. 
because that will give us the power more than anything else to pray those bold prayers, to pray prayers that bring power and to pray prayers that Lord, may even disregard our own comforts, may disregard where it is we um, want, I mean, sorry, the calm waters that we may want to preserve, but give us the energy, boldness and strength to say, God, whatever your agenda is, that's what I'm praying for. Grant me grace and strength to carry that out in this time and in this season. So as I close, I would just like for us to stand up so we can pray together. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful and thankful for the opportunity that we can sit as students at your feet and learn from the prayer, the prayer meeting, Lord, that happened in Acts 4. Father, my prayer is that, Lord, may we please always be found in healthy fellowship. When storms of life come, and they will come, may we, Lord Jesus, have a group of people who love you first and foremost. A group of people, Lord, who can pray and pray strength so that it may return to us. Father God, we also pray that we may grow in our pursuit of you in scripture. May we grow in our discipline in reading your scripture and applying it in our lives. May your truth permeate, Lord, um, even our prayer lives, that as we open our mouths to pray, it may be drenched in your word, O oh God. May our faith be energized, Lord Jesus, by the word that we do see and the word that we do read. And also, Lord, grant us the grace to pray according to your gender. May we, may we abandon the comforts, Lord, that we are prone to pray about. May we not, Lord, use prayer as a tool to preserve our comforts. But, Lord, may we use prayer to see your kingdom come in a mighty way in this, in this, in this city, in, 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 in this country, and, and wherever it is, Lord, we find ourselves. May we have the boldness, Lord Jesus, to pray uh, prayers that bring power. May we have the boldness to ask, Lord Jesus, for the grace and strength to carry out your work, no matter the fierce opposition that we may face. May we not consider that, but Lord, may you, Lord Jesus, who are sovereign above all, continue to carry out your work. We know that you're committed to your work. Father God, we also pray again for a revelation of who Jesus Christ is, seated on the holy mountain, crowned king above all. Because Lord, as we have a deeper revelation of who our king is, we have the strength and power to pray prayers that bring power, to pray prayers that see you move in a mighty way with total abandon. And Lord, our prayer is that, Lord, by your spirit, please may you work these things into our lives. May you, Lord Jesus, keep corporate prayer alive in this church. May you, Lord Jesus, strengthen our corporate prayer. May our hearts be moved to and encouraged, Lord, to meet together and to pray your will into, into this time. Father God, we pray for your grace because we cannot do it without you. We cannot do this without you, oh God. We need you, Lord, more than we have needed you, Lord, yesterday. And we'll need you more tomorrow, Lord. Father God, we just pray that your, the fellowship of believers, Lord, may be one where we can draw strength and pray your will in, into this time and in, in whatever sphere of influence we find ourselves. Father God, may you move in mighty ways with uh, signs and wonders and miracles, Father God, because, Lord, that is your hand moving to reach out to your people and to people that you love. May we be vessels, Lord Jesus, that can carry this out in this time. Father God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for what it is you accomplished on the cross. Because of that, we have life, Lord. And we pray that, Lord Jesus, we may use our lives, Lord, to the glory of your name. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 Praise God. Well, we've come to the end of our service for this morning. Uh, just a few reminders before uh, we dismiss is our announcements. Uh, live groups, I continue to encourage that. Uh, there will be intercessory prayer right here at the front. Um, and have a wonderful week. We look forward to having you back uh, next week Sunday. Thank you. God bless you. And you are dismissed.